Hello viewers, I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do the self writing task one and task two. I wrote it along with a student of mine only a few days ago who cleared the test in the first attempt with CLB 10, that is self 10 across all modules. All right, let's see what do we have here. Let's get started. You are applying for a job and need a letter of reference from someone who knew you when you were at school. So it's a semi-formal letter whenever you're writing to someone whom you know partially. Say what job you have applied for, explain why you want this job, suggest what information the teacher should include. Dear Mr. Gordon, I hope you're doing well. So whenever you're writing to someone that you already know, you should always ask for their well-being. I hope you're doing well. I'm writing to you to request you to provide me with a letter of recommendation for a job application. My name is Sandy Rogers and I was your student at the Greenlace Higher Secondary School in Greater Toronto in English department and I had scored 4.5 GPA while I was studying under your guidance. So you may also give some other fictitious name and whichever department you want. However, you taught us grammar and English and made us all understand the language very well. I thought of you for this recommendation letter as I have applied for the position of an English specialist at one of the leading multinational organization called as Accenture. You can just leave it alone with multinational organization if you don't want to give any name of the company, it's okay. It is a great American company and your recommendation letter will be a boon in getting shortlisted for the job. I am very much interested in acquiring this job and I will be well settled in a few years from now if I am selected. I would appreciate if you could include how I excelled in my school days and how I submitted my work on time. Nevertheless, your letter will land me in my dream career. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Regards, Sandy. So I have attempted all the prompts here. Plus, I have tried to write up to the mark. I have not exceeded the 200 word limit. Of course, you can write up to 10% of the 200, which would be 220. All right. So what do we have in the survey? Whenever you're writing for on a formal letter or a semi-formal letter, please do include, I look forward to hearing from you soon, but not on the informal letter. Remember this. For some reason, you're unable to crack the cell pip in the first attempt with CLB 9, that is cell pip 9 or cell pip 10. Please join our online coaching. I will be more than happy to help you crack the cell pip in the first attempt. Okay, the survey says a number of online education portals have appeared in the recent years, offering a range of courses from learning a language to highly technical skill development courses. Are they really challenging the traditional ways of education? Are they good or bad? What are your views? Public opinion survey option A, online education portals should be banned. B, online education portals are good for education system. I'm of the view that online education portals are good for education. So as usual to whom it may concern, in this contemporary world, websites have introduced many online courses with the advent of the World Wide Web. However, they are helping the students to learn both from learning a language skill to a highly advanced skill. Therefore, in my opinion, online portals should not be considered as bad or not be bad. To begin with, the websites are a boon to the individuals and society overall, as they help them to learn anything online without having to enroll physically in an institute. For instance, the websites help students to learn latest practices in pitching themselves with a niche job. On the other hand, these portals are not challenging the traditional method, but they are helping the students to learn state-of-the-art technologies. Furthermore, anybody with any 
age group can learn these courses online and get a certification with accreditation. In conclusion, I believe option B is appropriate and online portals and websites should not be banned as they are a quintessential part of school curriculum. Nevertheless, any decision taken by the authorities will be a welcome gesture according to the outcome of the survey regards Sandy. So I've written one more informal letter. Your university has organized the tour of Toronto City. Your friend lives in Toronto. Ask your friend about the tourist place in and around the city. Request your friend to arrange a weekend party for the classmates accompanying you. Okay, so you're requesting your friend to arrange a party as well. Hi, John. I hope you're doing well. Like in the semi-formal, we have to also address the friend with, I hope you're doing well, asking for well-being. I hope you're busy with, can I use twice? Yes, you may, or you may just chalk out. You can say, I know instead. All right. I know, okay. Hi, John, I hope you're doing well. I know you're busy with your usual routine of nine to five job. However, I'm completing my final year and hoping to get a job of my choice in the future. I'm writing this letter to inform you about the university tour of Toronto City next week. Furthermore, I request you to help me in identifying best sightseeing places at your city. Also, I request you to arrange a tour guide or be a guest yourself, which will be a great idea. As a result, you will get acquainted with my batchmates as well. I remember my visit to Toronto City last year and missing out on the visit to City Museum and the nearby lakes. Moreover, you are an expert as you know most of the places in Toronto City as you've been living there. At the end of the talk, we can have a party at your home on the weekend or we can go to a nice bar come restaurant. I'm elated that I'm going to meet you after a year and I'm looking forward to cherishing to a cherishing moment and a thrilling experience with you. Best regards, Simon. Okay, the next survey goes this way. Your company wants to change the working hours. They want to know your opinion. Which choice do you prefer? Explain why you prefer that choice. Also explain the problems the, with the other choice. Option one, start work at 8.30 a.m. and finish at 4.30 p.m. The workers would be able to sleep in. They would also be stuck in traffic jams every day. Option B, start work at 6.30 a.m. and finish at 2.30 p.m. The workers would have to wake up very early every day. They would have... They would have more time to run errands. Okay. To whom it may concern. My name is Simon and I have been working in this organization in the sales department from the last seven years. However, in my opinion, option one is appropriate to avoid bottlenecks as the city is heavily polluted to avoid traffic jams and the employees may go to bed on time and wake up early to report to the office. To begin with, People need at least eight hours of sleep during the night. Therefore, option two will be a nightmare for many late night sleepers. Furthermore, commuters from far off may find it difficult to reach office on time. Additionally, lack of sleep might lead to tardiness and pro procrastination in their work. On the other hand, individuals may skip their breakfast as they will have to start early, which may lead to health issues. For instance, running errands can also be done in the evening after 4.30 p.m. Nevertheless, changing shifts may have its own repercussions on people and they may have to reschedule their daily routines in a big way. In conclusion, I believe option one is ideal as people have been following this for a very long time and have comfortably gotten used to it. Nonetheless, any decision come of the survey, best regards, Simon. So I hope uh, viewers you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and smash the like button also comment below. This way I'll be able to come up with more such videos in the future for you. See you on the other side. This is Sridhar signing off from Selpip Academy. Thanks for watching.